fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early West. In time, Hayo Silver came to be the battle cry of justice. But the Lone Ranger always believed that a man was innocent until he was proven guilty. He brought about the conviction of numberless outlaws, cattle thieves, and gunmen, and saved many men who might have been condemned to prison or to death by the primitive law courts of the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear, when adventure lay at the end of every trail, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come along, Silver! We're on the trail of the Panhandle Kid! I'm Silver! Away! Young Jack Ross was sitting astride his horse in front of the general store at Willow City when a girl came out. Her arms were filled with parcels. She dropped one of them as she passed Jack, and he jumped from his saddle to pick it up and... Your package, miss. Oh, thank you. I didn't even know I dropped it. There. I think I've got it where it'll stay now. Uh-huh. I don't believe I've seen you in town before, have I, Mr... Mr... Jack Ross is my handle, ma'am. Miss, uh... Oh, well, that is, uh... It's Miss. I'm Gail Fisher. I was just on my way to my father's office. He's a sheriff here, you know. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you're here on business, Mr. Ross? <laughs> Miss Gale, this morning, the only reason I was heading my horse for Willow City was in hopes of getting work. I was hungry, plum busted, and right down in the mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. You needn't be. That was this morning. It's afternoon now, and things are some different. You found work? Well, not exactly. Then... Nope, Miss Gale, I ain't found what you'd call a regular job. But I'd done almost as well. I found me a partner. Oh. Yep, run into him this morning. Found him camped just off the trail. Feeding himself coffee and bacon. <laughs> Gosh, I'll never forget how good that grub smelled. He was an old friend of yours? Never seen him before. But he asked me to light in and eat, which I did pronto. We got to talking, kind of took a fancy to each other, and now he's inside the store here, loading up with supplies. Oh, how nice. Uh-huh. We're going into the hills and do some prospecting together. I've never tried my hand at looking for dust before, but he said as how he'd learned me the ropes. Then your friend must be a stranger here, too. Yeah, that's what he said. But say... How'd you guess it? Well, if he thinks there's gold in these hills, he must be a stranger. Well, everyone knows there isn't. Gosh, miss, is that right? Well, at least everyone says there isn't. <laughs> but, of course, gold is where you find it. Huh, that's what I've always heard. Uh, this partner of yours, he's an old prospector? <laughs> well, miss, he ain't more than a couple years older than me. Oh. But a mighty liberal fellow, I can tell you. Why, it's his own cash he's putting out for the supplies we need. Me being broke, he said as how he'd take care of that part himself. I see. Uh... I was just wondering something, Miss Miss Gale. Yes? If I was to take a quick trip into town sometime, do, do you think that maybe you'd... Um, well, I mean... Uh, I think I know what you mean. And I I believe I would. Gosh, that'd be fine. Shots! What? Hey, Silver! Get the sheriff! Come on, 
Mac, get on your horse. We'll get a light out of here. Quiet now. That's trouble, I tell you. The old fool give me an argument. Come on, before the law shows up. Well, I don't say You don't have to. Get going. Get up. Get up. Jack, wait. I'll be back, Miss Gale. Get up. Where's your paw? Here he comes. What's the trouble? What's going on around here? There were shots in Hank's store, Elvis. Sheriff, he shot me. Come on inside. All right, Elvis. All right, come on. Bad hurt, Hank? Oh, that's real bad, Sheriff. Dirty crook. He got all the cash I had in the till. Oh, hold it. Them fellas have just rode away. It must have been them. I seen them. I seen him. That's who it was, all right. No, it, it, it couldn't have been. Huh? Father, he didn't look like an outlaw. Who didn't? Why, Jack didn't. Jack? Well, that is why. Well, Gail, I... how come you know the name of one of them crooks? Oh, I tell you, Pa, he wasn't a crook. I'm sure of it. He, he was just telling me how he planned to go prospecting. Uh, there was just one fellow inside here, Alva. Uh-huh. But the other must have been waiting outside to keep watch. That's just what he was doing, Zeke. Oh, no. That was it, sure enough. And you stood right there talking to the lookout while his partner shot and robbed Hank. Daughter, I'm ashamed of you. But please... Gail, you keep still. Fellas, I want a posse to take after them crooks. Who's willing to ride along? I'll go with you, Sheriff. And somebody's got to see that Hank here gets fixed up. I'll take care of that, Sheriff. Oh, thanks, stranger. The doc ain't in town or we get him. Gail, you help the stranger. Yes, Father. All right, fellas, to your horses. Anyone see which way they went? There now, how do you feel? Not so good, stranger. That Stephen Polecat's bullet got me just above the knee. Mm, yes. We'll fix that up. I can do it by myself, stranger, if you want to ride after the posse. I'm going to, but I heard you say you believed one of those men innocent. He was. I'm sure he was. Very well. I'd like to hear your reasons while we're bandaging this wound. Then I'll ride. Stranger, if they was together, then they was both in on this sure as shooting. We'll see. Now hold still and we'll have you fixed up in no time. The posse started after Jack and his companion at once, but Jack's new partner seemed to know the country better than he had claimed. He led the way to a creek, which they entered and followed for several miles, then out of the creek onto some shelving rock and finally into a small canyon whose mouth was almost hidden by a stand of trees. Here he reined up. Oh, there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, we're safe enough here, I reckon. Look here. Yeah? I want some kind of an explanation. This looks mighty funny to me. I told you what happened, didn't I? Sure. You said you pulled out your gun just to show the storekeeper. He got excited, mistaking it for a holdup. <laughs> well, what more do you want to know? The truth. Now, didn't I just say Just that... hold up a second. I ain't no greenhorn. I strung along with you because you fed me and acted friendly. I thought you was on the square. But if you're up to something crooked, favor or no favors, I'm pulling my freight. Yeah? And right now. I reckon not. You think I won't? Well, then I'll Rain show Rain up there, partner. Rain up. But I... Maybe you don't savvy just how things is. I savvy that I ain't having nothing to do with outlaws. And I got a hunch that's just what you are. <laughs> you ain't never asked me what my handle is, have you? Well, I figured that was your business. Mm hmm Well, maybe I better tell you. Well? Folks call me the Panhandle Kid. What's that? Hmm. <laughs> you heard of me, huh? The Panhandle Kid? Who ain't heard that name? Why, if you're him... Yeah? Then you're one of the lowest murder and sidewinders in the whole West. You're calling me some mighty interesting names. But I've heard a lot worse. Now I'm leaving. And get jailed for holding up the store? For being partner of the fellow that shot the storekeeper? For being the partner of the panhandle kid? You... You don't act like you got much sense. You framed me. I'll bet you done it a purpose. <laughs> That's it. That's just what you've done. You knew when we rode to town what you planned to do. You had me wait outside the store just so as I'd look guilty, too. I needed a partner, Jack. So you figured that by framing me, I'd have to throw in with you. Maybe you got more sense than I was giving you credit for. Hey, you... I'll wait. Let me tell you what I got planned. I ain't listened to none of your crooked schemes. Yeah, you doggone fool. I've got everything fixed. I've been looking over this part of the country for the past month without nobody knowing it. Just so as I'd know where to go after the cash is to be had. All I've been needing is somebody to help me. Now, you throw in with me, and in one month, we'll both be rich. And you filled me up with your lying stories about prospecting. <laughs> well, there's more than one way to prospect for gold, ain't there? Now, take Zeke Munson, for instance. Who's he, and what about him? Who's Zeke? Why, he's one of the stingiest hombres in these parts. What's that got to do with me? Jack, that idiot's still got the first dollar he ever got his fist on. They say he's got somewhere between ten and $15,000 hid away in that shack of his. That don't interest me. Think of it, Jack. Ten or $15,000 in cash. How would you like to spend half of that? Are you... And I know just where that cash is hid. I won't have anything to do with it. Ah, don't be loco. 
The law's already got you pegged as a crook, ain't it? Yeah, but... And now you ain't got nothing more to lose by really turning crooked, have you? I'll clear myself somehow. I don't know how, but I will. And that ain't all. No? I'm going to see that you get what you've got coming to you. I... Don't throw no threats my way. You wait and see. I'll fix you. And you ain't teaming up with me? Not now or any time. You won't think it over? I've done all the thinking that's needed. Of course, you savvy, I can't let nobody loose. It's liable to tell what I got schemed. You mean... I mean take your choice between backing my play or taking my lead. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. Then fill your hand, blast you. You can't outdraw me. Ow! My gun! Who... Stand where you are, both of you. A masked man and a redskin. Uh, you shot my gun away. Make a move for your other gun and I'll do more. But how'd you find us? We got clear of the posse. I was in town right after the shooting. I gave first aid to the storekeeper, then followed the posse. But I just said we'd give them the slip. But you didn't give Tonto the slip. He decided you must have followed the creek bed. You did. When you left the creek, you made one mistake. Mistake? What mistake was that? You left the creek where there were rocks to hide the prints of your horses. You forgot, however, to choose a place where the sun would dry the water you splashed. Then that's how you found us. Right. All right, mister. You got us. Now, what are you going to do about it? You'll soon learn. Stranger, I don't expect you to believe me. But I ain't a crook. Honest, I ain't. It was just a scheme of this sidewinder here to make me look like Don't one. you believe it. He's in this just as bad as I am. I heard enough to know different. You, you did? I did. Tonto and I are keeping both of you prisoners. But we're not turning you over to the law, Jack, until we know you'll get justice. Gosh. Now get mounted. We're going to camp. Then I'm calling on the sheriff. Jack Ross and the panhandled kid were taken to the well-hidden camp of the masked man, then left in charge of Tonto, while the Lone Ranger returned to town. It was after dark that evening when he saw the sheriff riding toward his home. Quiet, Silver. Here he comes. All right, old fellow. Hold up, Sheriff. Hold up. Oh, whoa, whoa, Silver. Oh, whoa. Mask. I've got to talk to you, Sheriff. Don't slap, brother. A crook. Sheriff, your posse was hunting two men this afternoon. And missed them, blasted. I... Hey, what do you know about that? You ain't one of them, are you? If you are... I... I'm not, but I know where they are. What's that? They're in my camp. Thought I was keeping guard over them. Your camp? Where's it at? Come on, show it to me. I'll pick them fellas up right now. One moment. But I tell you... I happen to know that only one of those men is guilty. Before I turn him over to the law, I want your word. The other will go free. They're both crooks. No. One of them is the panhandle kid. He framed the other. The, the panhandle kid? Right. And you say he framed his partner? He wanted Jack to throw in with him. He figured that Jack would have to do that if the law believed him a crook. That ain't so. It's the truth. I savvy this now. There was three of you. Maybe more. But you had a quarrel, and now you're trying to get the panhandle kid jailed while you and that other fella go loose. I've told you the truth about this. You mean to say this Jack, or whatever his name is, can be innocent with all the evidence there is against him? Why, he was right outside, keeping watch for his partner. He heard the shots and van moves when his partner did. If that don't mean he's guilty, then I ain't no sheriff. Sometimes appearances can be made to tell a story contrary to the facts. Nonsense. You must have known of many such cases. Look here, mister. The only time anything like that could happen would be where there wasn't no witnesses. This time there was. And even if only one of them two fellas was inside the store, they're each as guilty as the other. You're convinced of that? I am. Now take me to them fellas, or I'll put you under arrest too. I don't think you will. Let go. Now listen to me. You're going to pay for this? Perhaps. However, I'm keeping my prisoners. You... And you'll get neither one of them until you've changed your mind about evidence. If that's what you plan, you're going to hang on to them hombres for a long time, mister. Sheriff, I've got an idea. You're going to change your mind sooner than you expect. You're crazy. That remains to be seen. And remember what I said. Until you do, Jack and the Panhandle kids stay with me. Come on, old fellow. Hi! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger left the sheriff after the lawman had declared that Jack Ross was just as guilty as the panhandle kid. Now we see the masked man as he enters his camp that same night. Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, boy. How'd you get out of the sheriff, stranger? He wouldn't believe me, Jack. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. I told you he wouldn't. Well, thanks for trying anyhow. I reckon you better turn me in along with this crook here. Maybe if I stood trial, I could get the judge to see it my way somehow. And I don't hanker to be dodging the law all the time. I have a different plan, Jack. You have? I'll need your help, however. But what are you planning? As things stand, the sheriff believes you guilty. He refuses to take my word for your innocence. I doubt that he'd even believe a confession from the panhandle kid. He'd probably think it part of a scheme to cheat the law. <laughs> I figured on that. Quiet. Jack, the only chance we have is to prove to the sheriff that it's easy to make an innocent man look guilty. We must prove that even witnesses can be mistaken. I don't see how. It can be done if you and Tonto will help me. Tonto, do what friends say. I knew you would, Kimosabe. And you, Jack? Of course I will. Good. Tonto and I will have to ride to town. That means someone must guard Panhandle Kid here. You can do it. If you'll give me your word not to escape. Then what else do I do? That's all. It'll be enough, however, and it won't be easy. The Panhandle Kid is dangerous. I'll handle him. You ain't gonna leave me alone with him, are you? I am. And I won't be safe. Well, if he tries to get even with me. Look, you can't leave me alone with him like this. I... Jack. Yeah? That's another thing. The panhandle kid framed you. But it's up to the law to make him pay for that. You can't take the law into your own hands. Wish to heaven I could. You won't, however. No, I reckon not. If you say I hadn't better. You'll give me your word on that, too? You got it, mister. But what do you and Tonto plan on doing when you get to town? We won't go there together. Tonto will leave first. Uh. I'll get there tomorrow night after dark. I'm calling on the storekeeper and then on the sheriff again. And then what? What we do then depends on some information from the panhandle kid. From me? Yes. And you will talk or take the consequences. The following day, the sheriff had another search for Jack and the panhandle kid. But this time, the posse was given instructions to look for the masked man as well. However, the second search met with no more success than the first. The sheriff returned home that evening and... Hello, Father. Good evening, honey. Supper about ready? It won't be long. Here, you sit down. You look all tired out. I am, that. Thank you. Well, we hunted high and low, and we never seen a sign of them crooks. And I hope you don't. Still thinking that one fella never had nothing to do with a holdup, huh? I'm certain he didn't. If you'd talk to him like I did, Father, you'd feel the same way. Mm, I reckon not. Did you just get into town? Oh, we was back an hour or more ago. Had some work to do in the office before coming home, though. Oh. Then there was some fool Indian come to see me. An Indian? What about? Well, don't ask me. That's something I never did find out. He just hemmed and hawed around, getting in the way, till I told him to clear out. That's funny. I wonder. Oh, Father. Huh? Your badge. What's become of it? My badge? <laughs> Why, it's right. Well, I'll be gone. It must have come loose. I don't know where... Blast it, I do know where. Yes? That engine. But what? I he don't... took it. I know doggone while he did. That's what he was fooling around for. I'm as sure that's where my badge went as I am that I'm sitting right here. But how did he get it and whatever would he want it for? He stumbled again me when he was leaving. That's how he got it. And if it wasn't for some crooked scheme, I'll eat my Stetson. But I... And I'm going right back downtown to see if I can put my hands on the thieving redskin. I'll teach him. I'll show him what it means to steal a lawman's badge. Don't move. That same mask fella. Take your hand from that gun. What are you doing back here? Aim for you. No, please. You can't harm my father. He won't be harmed, Gail. I won't go. I don't know what you're up to, but you can't make me go along. I think I can. I you're covered, you... Sheriff. You called me an outlaw. Very well. An outlaw wouldn't hesitate to shoot if you... necessary. Father, do what he says. Don't give him an excuse to fire. Where do you figure on taking me? You'll see. You'll tell me. On your I... way. I've talked enough. Go on. Walk ahead of me. Don't harm him, stranger. Please don't. You said you wouldn't. That depends on you. On me? If you report this, if you send for help, I won't answer for your father's safety. Keep quiet and he'll be returned unharmed. Oh, I will. I will. See that you do. Down the steps, Sheriff, and get to your saddle. I wish I savvied what you was up to. If you recall the conversation we had last night, you might understand. If... Is, what do you mean, the conversation we had last night? If you don't understand now, you will before I'm through. Now come, we're riding. Get up, get up there. Come on, Silver! It was much later that night when Zeke Munson, the man the panhandle kid had planned to rob of his savings, was awakened from a light sleep by a noise in the adjoining room. What was that? I heard something. I'm blame sure I did. 
My cash, my savings, it's a thief. Where, where'd I put my gun belt? So doggone dark. Uh, here it is. Gone. The gun's gone. I don't dare to tackle a crook without no gun. If I could just get a good look at who it is, I... Uh, open the door a bit more and... He's lit a match. Why, it's... He's lit out. And the low-down sneaking coyote of a thief was the sheriff. A hurried examination of his cash box revealed that Zeke's worst fears were true. Every dollar that he had saved over the years had been taken. Hastily, despite the lateness of the hour, Zeke dressed, saddled his horse, sent it racing toward the homes of his friends. Get up there, boy. We'll show the sheriff. When will I tell the fellas about this? Get up. Get up there. The word spread through the small town. Homes darkened for the night suddenly became bright with hurriedly lit lamps. Wives asked excited questions while their husbands made ready to join the men gathering in front of the reopened cafe. At last, with more than a score of townsmen to accompany him, Zeke headed for the sheriff's home. There's still a light in this place, fellas. He's most likely just got back home. Ain't that his horse out in front? Sure it is. And it's saddled. That proves what I said. Rein up, men. We'll go inside and find out about this. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Follow me. There he is. You can see him in there talking to Gail. Open up, Sheriff. Open up before we come in anyhow. Hey, what's the crowd for? Who is it, Father? Looks like near everybody in town. Has something happened? Stand aside. We're coming in. All right, fellas, come ahead. All right. Well, look here. What's this all about? I reckon you know, you thieving coyote. But what are you coming here like? Uh, search the house. See if you can find Zeke's cash anywhere inside. That's right. Wait. Zeke's cash? It wouldn't be here. Wait. I'm doggone sorry, Gail. But, but I don't... I reckon it'll come mighty hard finding out your paws are crook. Uh, a crook? Oh, no, no, you're wrong. I wish I was, but I ain't. Have you fellas gone loco? See if the sheriff's still wearing his badge, Zeke. My badge? But what about... Stand still, Sheriff. We'll soon find out. Yep, there it is. Right there on your vest. Or I seen it when you lit that match to see if you got all of my cash there was to get. But, but my badge was stolen. You're wearing it, ain't you? Uh, listen to me. It was stole, I tell you. I just now got it back. I found it right on the floor here. A mighty thin story. And now I suppose you claim you was home all evening, too. No, I wasn't. There, fellas, you see? The sheriff's admitted he was gone. But he was away only because a masked man came here and took him away. He made Father go with him. <laughs> a masked man? That's a good one. <laughs> what else? What else would you expect this girl to say? I ain't seen no masked man around of any of you. <laughs> Where did this masked fella you're talking about take you, Sheriff? Why, no place in particular. We just rode out of town away. <laughs> yeah? Then what? Then we got off our horses and waited a spell. After that, he brought me back. And I got here just ahead of you fellas. I've heard some doggone tall stories, but that's got anything beat that I ever run across before. So the masked fella just rode away with you, and then after a while brought you back. He never tried to steal nothing from you or anything else, is that it? Look here, men. I know it sounds funny, but that's just exactly the way it was. I give you my word, that's the truth. Ah, why I seen you myself. Here I it be- is. Uh, oh, you found it? All the fool places. He had it hid right under the rug by the door. Look at all them hundred dollar bills. That's mine, all right. That's it. It was in folding money. It can't be your Zeke. I mean, what would it be doing here if it was? I don't savvy uh, this. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, me Wait, men, please. Listen to me, please. You know my father wouldn't steal anything. He's always been honest. Well, some of you men have known my father for years. How can you say he could be dishonest? There's always a first time for everything. Miss Gale, every bit of evidence is again your paw. I seen his badge. Well, look at it. Look where a bullet dented it one time. I'd know that badge anywhere. You, you might have been mistaken. But that ain't all. Your paw was gone just during the time I was robbed. On top of that, here's the same cash as was stolen. And he ain't got nothing but a tall story about a masked man to alibi himself with. And I'm the masked man. Well, there he is. That's a fellow. That's him. Come in, Tonto. You too, Jack. Bring the panhandle kid along with you. Hey. Hey. Oh, oh, right. Get in there, you. Stranger, tell these folks the truth. You got to clear me. You know where I was. One moment, Sheriff. Every one of these men are convinced of your guilt. Because he is guilty. You see? 
Cheryl, they're convinced of your guilt just as you were convinced of the guilt of Jack here. Well, I... You said if he'd been framed, there couldn't be as much evidence against him. You know you've been framed, yet there's even more evidence against you than there was against him. What's that about the sheriff being framed? I'll explain in a moment. First, I want the sheriff to admit he might have been wrong about Jack. I, uh... Well, yes, I suppose I might have been. Then, Handel, tell the sheriff the truth. I'll confess... But don't forget you told me it'd be easier for me if I did. I think the sheriff can arrange to keep you in jail here on a hold-up charge. If you deny the truth, however, you'll be sent to one of the counties that wants you for murder. And that means hanging. I'll tell the truth. I said I would. I don't want to hang. That's up to the sheriff. Then you did frame Jack here. That's the way it was, sheriff. But look here, stranger. How do we know you've been telling a straight story? If the sheriff was framed, who done it? And how'd the cash get here? Well, you doubt what I've told you. Check with Hank Jackson, the storekeeper. He knew my plans before they were carried out. I told him so that he could back up my word if you doubted me. But the cash and the badge. Well, Taldo took the badge from the sheriff this evening. He disguised himself to look as much like the sheriff as possible. And when he was in Zeke's place, he lit a match on purpose so that Zeke could see the badge. Well, I'll be doggone. Then he put the cash under the rug there and threw the badge on the floor when I brought the sheriff back. Both the sheriff and Gail were too busy watching me to notice Tonto. But, Sheriff, what was the stranger's ID? He done it because I was a stubborn idiot. Hmm? I wouldn't believe him when he told me Jack didn't have nothing to do with holding up Hank's store yesterday. But I've learned my lesson. Sheriff, anybody that come as close to be in jail for nothing as you did ought to have learned it. I sure got a scare when I thought my cash was stole. But you always was a bullheaded fellow, Sheriff. And if the masked men fella changed that... Then I don't give a hoot. Come on, Kilroy, old fellow. We're going to solve the mystery of Apache Valley. I'll see you over. Away. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.